Alex, good morning to you. Thank you for being on the program today. Good morning, Rob. Good to be with you guys. Are you uh, in Charlestown this uh, morning or are you in D.C.? Yeah, sitting home in Charlestown, but heading to D.C. tonight. One of the other things we, we ended up doing when uh, Saturday when we did finally pass a bill, uh, we then uh, uh, changed our schedule so that we're in we're in session the next two weeks, so today and this week and next week. Those were actually originally scheduled to be district work period times. Mm hmm yeah, but uh, we still have to pass the appropriations bills, so I'm sure we can get into that. We've passed four out of 12 of our spending bills, and so the theory is during this period of time we'll pass the rest. And uh, what, obviously there's a lot going on here, a lot to unpack on this uh, first and foremost. What is the future of Kevin McCarthy, Speaker McCarthy, right now at this time when Mr. Gates has stated publicly he wants to unseat him? You know, I was just reading up on that. Uh, I, I see what Mr. Gates has said, and just so you know, it takes 200, 218 votes. Actually, we're short four members of Congress right now. So it takes 217 votes to elect a speaker or 217 votes to get rid of the speaker. It's not like one person can get rid of the speaker. Um, just want to make sure that's clear. So whether or not there's 217 votes, I, I mean, that remains to be seen. It's a, it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty dramatic move, frankly. Um, like there, were, there were 20 people who didn't vote for Kevin McCarthy at the beginning of the year. As you may recall, I was not one of those 20. But uh, of those 20 people, I think, feel that they had some commitments that were made, some promises that were not kept. So I'm going to have to see how this one plays out and, see, frankly, see what the Democrats do. Because on Saturday, uh, the, all the Democrats, literally every Democrat except one, so over 200, uh, you know, voted for the resolution that Speaker McCarthy and, frankly, most Republicans voted for. So I know some Republicans are mad about that. I, didn't vote, I did not vote for it, as you know, but – uh, whether that triggers enough to remove the Speaker of the House, what the Democrats would even do, because the Democrats did it. I mean, they voted with Kevin on it, Kevin McCarthy on it. So I don't know. I don't know how this will play out. I'm going to have to wait and see on that one. My wife is a federal employee, and we do this dance every, what, two, three years. Uh, and frankly, it's, it's tiresome. Um, I'm done with it. And I want to know why you folks can't be adults and get together and do something regarding the budgets. Why does this always have to come down to a threat of a shutdown? And in the end, a bunch of people who are underneath Congress don't get paid, yet you folks still walk home with a paycheck, even though you shut the government down. Well, it's an, it's annoying, clear. Alex. It is. This has been a dance that's gone on for too long. Yeah, well, let me make it clear. I voted for all four appropriations bills that are one year. That's what we're supposed to do pass a one-year funding bill. So the spending plans, like the military, let's start with that, because the military is half of the spending that we vote upon. I voted to fully fund it for an entire year. So this dance you're talking about, guess what? we got a 45-day deal here. 45 days, Rob. What are we going to do in 45 days? We're going to be in the same situation. I know. Your wife will be in the same situation. So I voted not to do that. I voted for a full four-year, one 12-month funding bill. That's what we're supposed to do. So, I mean, look. I'm going to, I'm going to, we have to be responsible here too, Rob, because if we don't pay our bills in this country, we keep this debt going on, $33 trillion and growing, we're not going to pay any bills. Okay, There will be a permanent government shutdown in the future because the interest on the national debt will be higher than the money coming in. Okay, So we cannot be irresponsible here. That's what, that's what we, need to, we need to keep that front and center. Do you really think the founders of this country ever thought we put ourselves $33 trillion in debt? Okay, What we need is a plan to stop that. We need a plan not to bankrupt America as well. So we have to do both. And look, it, and I look, I'm agree. It's ridiculous that we went nine months, nine months since Republicans took over Congress and yet to pass our spending bills. So why it waited until the last minute? It wasn't me. I voted for every spending bill that came, every every appropriate the, the spending plan, the way we're supposed to do it for the full year. Um, so you know, we just sit here and point fingers, but I'm just telling you, as your representative, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do the right thing. Yeah, perhaps you misunderstood me. This wasn't uh, me pointing fingers at a particular p uh, political party, mm -hmm. nor is it me pointing fingers at the last minute save the uh, shutdown movement that always takes place. My finger pointing is at what happens during the entire course of the year where we always have mm -hmm. to come down to this point. Why can't adults come together and come up with a budget that works? We all agree $33 trillion in debt is insane. It's unsustainable. It was unsustainable some time ago, and it's only going to get worse. Something has to be done about it, but there's an entire year for a budgeting process to do something about it. Why does it always have to come down yeah. to a threat of a shutdown? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to try. I'm not even going to try to justify it. Uh, it shouldn't. 
I was on the budget committee my first two years. What we're supposed to do is pass a budget by March, which has spending caps so we know what our, how much money we can spend. Then we're supposed to authorize what's legal to spend it upon, and then we're supposed to pass the funding bills. And because of dysfunction in both parties, frankly, uh, that's been not been followed like it should have. And there are many people like me who have said, like you right now, screamed it. We should do that. We need to do this. This isn't right. But instead of making those cuts, because there would be some cuts. I mean, even the, the, the first bill that failed had a 30% cut to a lot of government agencies. So those, are, those are deep cuts. But instead of making cuts and reforms that would, in fact, balance the budget, because that's uncomfortable. Okay, It's uncomfortable to cut. People will complain about that. But we need to do it, or we're going to bankrupt our country. So people don't want to make those decisions. It jams up to the last second. Uh, a lot of people, not me, a lot of people don't want to make those tough decisions. And look, I've been consistent. I've voted for 10 year resolutions, you know, I think my entire time in Congress. So uh, I, I don't think it's fair to the military. The military hates these continuing resolutions. So I was saying, let's stay there. Let's get our job done. Stay over the weekend. Let's stay until we pass all the bills, work them out with the Senate. That's what we're supposed to do. And that's what I'm still still planning to do. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, Congressman. Uh, good morning. I have several, uh, three or four specific questions, but uh, just for information, the military uh, appropriation was passed. What are the other what other three were passed? Uh, we passed before we before August uh, recess. We passed the Military Construction and Veterans Affairs Bill, VA, and then it was the, the next one was Foreign Operations, um, and then you know the one that actually didn't pass, there's <laughs> 29 people uh, voted against it, uh, was uh, an agricultural one, but the other one that did pass was Homeland Security. So I guess you're you're seeing a consistent theme here. It's the you know security and and the uh, uh, military ones that passed. Those four have passed. Frankly, those are less controversial. The military construction one, funding the Veterans Affairs, nobody votes against that. Both parties support that, including the Senate. That's an easy one to put through. Same with military. Go yeah, ahead. That was my point. Those were easy yeah. ones. Those were the low, uh, yeah. low-hanging low fruit. Uh, yeah. Was there any possibility at all of passing all 12 uh, at this point in time? And if there was no possibility, which I doubt if there was, uh, what would happen to the government if you pass, say, 11 of the 12? So let's, that, that's exactly the point. If we pass 11 of the 12 and go through what we call regular order, pass the House, passes the Senate, you know, you, you have to usually have a conference committee, you reconcile the differences between the two, they teach this in school, then the president signs it or vetoes it. If we pass 11 out of 12, the one that did not pass, whichever one it is, just that one, you'd have a shutdown. So let's say, for example, it's the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, which has historically waged war on coal in our state here in West Virginia and is hassling oil and gas in the energy sector, pushing Green New Deal nonsense they shouldn't even be doing. If that shut down, I don't think that many conservatives would have a problem. And, and the Democrats know that. They don't want to pass the other ones and leave the EPA hanging out there because it might shut down. Well, they want to lump it in with the military, and that's wrong. That's what we need to push back against. Well, that's that's the exact point, that uh, uh, yeah. what you're trying to do is to take one half of the population that that it falls in your camp to promote that, and you leave the other half of the population basically with no recourse. I don't know what you mean by half the population. Well, I'm saying are, are I'm, 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 I'm conveniently dividing the Republicans and Democrats, that it's the, the, oh. the one that you're promoting is uh, the Democrats represent approximately one half, the Republicans represent one half. So by uh, what you're proposing is that you take care of the half that you want to take care of, but the other half is not going to be addressed. Well, it would just be a majority vote in Congress is the way it would work. I mean, I, I vote. For a lot of funding bills, I don't agree with everything in there. And if the in, it's, it's our job, I mean, we have a Republican majority, at least in the House. And I will remind all your listeners that the Constitution of the United States of America puts all power of spending and taxation starts in the U.S. House of Representatives, not the U.S. Senate and not the president. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a president who thinks he can make up laws. He, he tried to waive the entire student loan debt of the whole country, a trillion dollars. He had no power to do that. He won't enforce the border. I think we're, we have a two-tier system of justice. I think we're at a critical moment. Yeah. So yes, okay. I will. I will. I will do what the voters gave us the power to do and try to fight for them. 
Okay. Yeah, and uh, uh, trying to keep it very focused to the budget. You said a second ago that you voted for most continuing resolutions. Uh, this one that against, we had against on, most, against against most, against most. Against most. Okay, yeah, against. so uh, so your, uh, Congressman Miller voted for it on Saturday. Both Mansion and Capito had stated they would be voting for it uh, because of the military, because of the border patrol, uh, border uh, patrol, and the like. Uh, what? Why did you vote against it, Congressman? Well, it's only 45 days. We need a 12-year bill. We're going to be in the same situation in 45 days. But you're not, going to, guys, you're not going to get a 12-year bill right no, now. I'm I not, mean, I'm a not 12, 12 months, 12 months. See, I'm not going to accept that hypothetical. That's what people keep saying. Well, since we're not going to do what we're supposed to do, since we're going to fail, let's just do this other thing. I don't accept that. We need to do our job. The military deserves a 12-month spending bill. Continuing resolutions wreak havoc in the military. They can't buy the ships they need. They can't switch the type of military supplies they need. They can't pay people differently. The military hates continuing resolutions, guys. They hate them. They're terrible for the military. We should pass the bill. We should stay there and pass the bill. Okay? And, the, and, and for those who think it was th the first one was 30 days, it was 45. And look, I'm in, I've been in Congress nine years. Nine years. This keeps happening. And so we stand up to it and do our jobs the way we're supposed to. They're gonna keep, this is going to keep happening. It's going to hurt the military. It's going to hurt our country, and we're going to keep the path of bankruptcy. I don't see that there's another option. Maybe what, you, what you're presenting is because we're going to fail to do what we're supposed to do, let's talk about how we're going to fail and do it differently. I, I, I just don't accept that premise. We need to do our job. We could have had that bill passed by now. We passed it last week. Conference with the Senate, it goes into law. You take care of it. That's what we're supposed to do. Congressman, this is John Gilstrap. Bipartisanship isn't failure. Um, it seems to me that with such a slim – margin in the House of Representatives. There was supposed to be the red wave that never happened. I think there's probably a message in there for Republicans. And he, all spending starts in the House of Representatives, but let's be honest, it has to get through a Democrat-controlled Senate and then a Democrat-controlled White House. So a lot of these poison pill issues that are going into the budget seem to me to be posturing. And I don't, can you explain to me how the citizens of West Virginia are better from the obstructionism than we would be through bipartisan you know, compromise where every, nobody gets everything they want, but everybody gets something that they want. Mm. You know, I, I get that the Democrats said it a Democrat president, and uh, Joe Biden, the president of the United States, is, has the power to veto any bill he wants. If he doesn't like what's in there, he can veto it. Uh, but for starters, at least for starters, uh, we should pass the spending bills, single subject. I think everyone in this, here today can agree when legislation passes, you should t handle one subject at a time. You shouldn't mix abortion policy with, I don't know, uh, transportation. I mean, single subject bills, that's the best way to run government. So we have the, the spending plans, one subject at a time, and frankly, it is bipartisan. I don't disagree that these things ha many of these things have to be bipartisan. Some issues become partisan. It's a shame that they do, like Second Amendment rights. I don't know why that's a, bipart why that's a partisan issue. I would think there are some Democrats who believe in the right to keep and bear arms. So it depends on it really depends on the issue you're talking about. It would be my answer. But for starters, the military bill, which is half discretionary spending. Well let me let me qualify something. Make sure just state this because I gotta make sure I remind everybody. Entitlement programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, those are entitlement programs. Those do those keep going no matter what. They're automatic. That's not affected by us pa passing these other bills. But for those that are we do vote upon every year. The military, it's very bipartisan. So is the foreign operations. The, the you know, for, foreign affairs bills, those are very bipartisan. When you get down to the EPA, I'm going to defend my state. I do not think the Green New Deal and these energy plans that are targeted to destroy coal is good for America. So I'm going to vote what I think is good policy, frankly, for one, and honestly vote my constituents. And so do the Democrats. No one votes. There's 435 of us. We're all elected by our constituents, and we fight for our values. I think that's the process. That's going on, going on for a long time is going to continue to go on. And if, if voters don't like it, every two years they can switch the government. Next year we can switch the president. That's the way it works in this country. And I, and I, will, I will also say um, it wasn't a stalemate. I mean, yeah, the way we didn't pick up 40 seats, but we did pick up the U.S. House of Representatives. Nancy Pelosi was removed and Kevin McCarthy was put in. We have a Republican Speaker of the House. That's different. The voters wanted something different, and I think that they deserve to, for us to do what we said we would do. I've heard it 
suggested that a lot of this is brinksmanship move at a personal level between Matt Gates and Kevin McCarthy. Do you think there's any truth to that? I mean, those two have definitely been criti- critical of each other, and, and other members have been critical of other members. And heck, one guy called people who didn't vote for these bills clowns. They call it a clown caucus. So, you know, I think we should avoid the personal insults. And frankly, that's true, whether it's in the, within the Republican Party or between Republicans and Democrats. And I think we should avoid the personal insults. We shouldn't make it personal. I don't know that it is personal. I think uh, Mr. Gates feels very strongly, uh, and frankly, I agree with his position as far as the spending bills, that we should – uh, you know, spend appropriately and balance the budget and do single subject spending bills. And, and you know, basically that, that's the stuff we said we would do. I mean, that's, that's actually the role of the U.S. House of Representatives ch- historically. And they talk about from the founding of America to about 25 years ago, that's what we always did. What you're seeing today is not normal. It's not the way we've always done government. We normally actually do the spending bills the way we're supposed to. Uh, it, how we've gotten away from that, it, it's terrible. We have three separate branches of government, ladies and gentlemen. So, I, so to answer your question, no, I don't think it's personal. I think there's a difference of opinion on how we should operate, you know. And you know, I tell you what, in 44 days or 45 days, we might be having this exact same conversation, okay? Exact same conversation because we haven't passed the, if we haven't passed the bills by then. No doubt. Then another 30 days, same thing. Another 45 days, same thing. No way to run government. No way to run government. So I think Mr. Gates. Um, is upset about that, and many of them had a lot of meetings with the Speaker of the House, the now Speaker of the House, when he was voted in the Speaker of the House, because you recall that whole debate. Like I said, I wasn't one of them, so I don't know, you know, what was agreed upon, and I guess he feels that that you know the promises aren't being kept. But as you guys are pointing out, you know, many people feel there wasn't a better option than what they did. So um, look, I'm going to vote my conscience, okay? I'm going to vote my conscience. I'm going to do what I think is right, but I'm not going to make it personal towards others, and you know. I, I even – I often like – I think I prefer – I think it's better oftentimes on some issues for me to get all the information and wait until it's time to vote before I decide how to vote. And that's true of a lot of bills because a lot of these votes – look, there's two sides to every issue. We've just debated it here. I've explained my vote, but I understand the other point of view. That, like one of you all said, they didn't feel there was a better option. I don't agree with that, but I understand why they didn't feel there was a better option. So um, I don't think we should make it personal, but – I would say this much. We have 45 days now. So one thing that we can all agree upon, maybe even some Democrats, I don't know, but at least the majority party in the House, is pass the remaining eight bills. Pass them all. Let's pass them all, put them in the U.S. Senate, and then see what they do. If the U.S. Senate chooses not to pass any of our spending bills and another continuing resolution, we can have this discussion. At least it would be clear that you know, if we want to debate what the Senate's doing versus the House. But I have to, I, that's why I said the co-equal branches of government. The House of Representatives is co-equal to the U.S. Senate, and the Congress is co-equal to the president. I fear for the future of this country if the Congress starts subjugating itself and bowing down and letting the president do whatever they want, do whatever they want, not enforce the border. I mean that's ridiculous. That's the law of this country. He ain't doing it. Okay? We cannot have the president by emergency powers or assume powers to himself. That is a, that is a jeopardy for this country, which is why we've got to control the purse strings. That's why the founders of our country – put that in the Constitution. So uh, that's what I'm going to fight for. Alex, in 2017, the Republicans had the presidency, the Senate, and the Congress. Uh, You were in Congress at that time. Did you folks make a concerted effort to try to balance the budget and reduce spending? We did. We did, Rob, and it's the same issue. We actually did pass. At that point, there was a time we passed all of our appropriations bills. You may remember the uh, the so-called Schumer shutdown. It was only three days, but we passed all our spending bills, And the U.S. Senate, they still have a 60-vote margin over there. So even though the Republicans control it, and now even though the Democrats control it, they have an internal rule. It's called the filibuster. that requires 60 votes. So it has to be bipartisan. You have to find 10 or 12 Democrats to vote with Republicans or 10 or 12 Republicans to vote with Democrats. This is a huge challenge in the U.S. Senate, frankly, um, because there are disagreements on some things. Not other things, but the military funding. When Schumer – held up the military funding bill back in 2017, when you're right, we had total control. But Schumer essentially wouldn't allow that bill to be even considered. It's called a filibuster. And the government shut down over the weekend. It shut down like we almost did last week. It shut down Friday night, and they passed something Monday morning and opened back up. And that was completely the Democrats doing that. And he wanted amnesty. His demand was amnesty for illegal immigrants. That's what that's, He wasn't going to pass any spending bills unless we addressed amnesty. That was the game play. Um, but that, that's what happens a lot. So 
<clears throat> after that, after he got blamed for that and he withdrew his objections, we actually passed a 12-year funding bill for the military. And all we had to do after that was keep passing them and go back to what's called you know, the regular way we're supposed to do it. But instead, we put the other 11 back in one big, what we call an omnibus, and we passed that and got it off. That was a mistake, in my opinion, and I didn't support that. But it is possible. It's, it's kind of to your ear. I think the point you're asking is why didn't you do it or can it be done? It is possible to be done. That's why I don't I – don't, I know one person asked this question. I get asked this all the time. I have these conversations with my colleagues in Congress, which is since we've failed to do – since we're failing, since we're failing to do what we're supposed to do, let's go do this other stuff. Well, the other stuff is, 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 in my view, worse. Yeah, I wasn't. That wasn't a gotcha. I really, genuinely couldn't remember what the snag was there, and it was. I do remember the Schumer yeah. shutdown. So yeah, go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I was thinking it was a Schumer shutdown. But then, but then we, but then after we won that, we still didn't do the right thing and pass the remaining bills. Sorry, go ahead. But uh, yeah, you mentioned 2017, and I was. I'm thinking 2018 though. Uh, the government was still the Republicans in all three uh, three leadership positions. Uh, went 34 days during the shutdown. Um, you have to go back and look at the exact. Yeah, you know, I, I exact thank you for that. But yeah. Yeah. let me let um, me. Sh- uh, uh, final question for Alex, because I know he has to get going here at the bottom half of the hour. Okay, quick question. There was an agreement between uh, uh, the Speaker, the uh, uh, the President of the Senate, and the President uh, uh, earlier with a one percent reduction across the board. Uh, when these physical tough times, why did that not get some uh, some uh, uh, some support? with the Republicans in the House. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. So when Speaker McCarthy negotiated the second uh, debt ceiling increase, and by the way, I voted for the first one. I don't care if we talked about this on your show. I voted for the first bill, but not the second. It's going to be another probably $3 trillion in debt. But anyway, when that was negotiated, in that law, it was actually placed that if we do what's called these continuing resolutions, these, these big spending bills like we just did, it's a 1% reduction across the board. So we have a 1% reduction. That, that's like an automatic kick-in thing. I don't think that actually starts till January, though, by the way. That doesn't kick in till January because that bill passed this year, so it doesn't take effect till January. But there will be a 1% reduction, and I think the belief was that would be leverage to force everyone, Republicans and Democrats, to come to the table, do the responsible thing, and pass the spending bills with a plan that you know controls the power of the purse, protects our country, and also controls spending. But that was in that, that, was in that uh, previous agreement. But yet there was no support for that this time. For the one for the one percent. For the one yeah, percent. That was part of the discussion. And that's kind of what set this all up. Is, is Speaker McCarthy said, "No, it, it, it it'll happen in January unless we undo it, which is always possible because as Congress passes laws, you pass a law, you, you know you can you can waive you can waive it in another bill, but in January, there sh- if we don't pass all of our spending bills as we just discussed, all twelve spending bills, single subject, if we don't do that." And we do with these continuing resolution things that it's supposed to be a one percent cut cut is supposed to kick in 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 uh, January. So that was actually agreed upon in the in the last bill that was passed in in the, in the debt ceiling increase bill. Alex, final word so, is yours. Uh, whatever you no. want to declare the table. Well, just a quick reminder: I'm running for the U.S. Senate. Uh, you know, I think West Virginia deserves a conservative U.S. senator. I'm a fighter, and I'm the only conservative running. And May 14th is the primary. We'll be here before you know it. I'm sure I'll be on your show before that, but. Yeah, you'll be hearing more about that as, as we go forward, and you know I do appreciate the honest discussion. I know these are uh, issues that uh, that are uh, strong views on both sides, uh, but as I think you all know, uh, I vote my conscience and I fight for what I believe in. Frankly, I'm just I'm just keeping my word to the voters when I ran. Thank you all very much. You're Thank welcome. You, Open Thank invitation you. whenever their schedule is convenient to be on the show. Of course. Thank you, Alex.